show you a boat right in this tutorial where we'll add boats to Minecraft. Alrighty, friends, back in Intelligence Morning. And in this tutorial, we're going to be adding a custom boats to Minecraft, which, yes, it will include a custom chest boat, of course. That's a big part of this whole situation. Now, boats are, as you can once again clearly see from the length of this video, a little bit of a more involved topic. We will be copying over quite a few things here in terms of the code. So do be aware that all of the code, as always, is linked in the description below. And let's get started. So for our boat, we will need custom entities because a boat is a custom entity. And for that, we can go into our custom entity class over here we can immediately create the mod boat entity over here as well as the mod chest mod chest boat entity those are gonna be the two classes that we need to create and the mod boat entity we can extend that from the boat right here net minecraft world entity vehicle and we hover over this create constructor matching super right here and then there's a couple of things to do so we can middle mouse man click on the boat and you can see the boat is very complicated actually like as in like very very complicated and long so that is quite crazy but at the very end over here that is actually where we want to be because we want to copy over the type right here as this has to be done custom in this case because it's an enum and enums you can't really extend them so the way that i found this to be easiest is literally to just copy over the type right here and to put it into your boat and then of course we want to change this because in this case well we don't have the oak right here right our type would be the pine and if you had more then you could add them over here right this is just an advanced enum so the last one here ends with a semicolon and if you had a second one then you would separate them with a comma like this shouldn't be anything too crazy over here basically just a bunch of java in that case but yeah so the planks over here would then of course be mod blocks dot pine planks dot get and then the name here is also going to be pine that's actually quite important to change now in terms of the rest the only thing here is we want to just replace this with pine and then here in the by map, of course, this is no longer the boat dot type. This is now the mod boat entity dot type. And basically, you want to change this everywhere where it is applicable. Basically, both in the codec and the by ID, as well as in the by ID and the by name methods. And then no more errors should be present. And that is actually a quite important thing that we need to do. Now, we don't need to do this for the chest boat, luckily, because we can take the same type over here. But that is the first thing we definitely need to do in the boat entity. And then there's a couple of other methods to overwrite as well. But the first thing is actually we want the data type. So this is going to be a entity data accessor. Again, this is the data type ID. And for that, we're going to need a couple of methods. Um, once again, like I said, I will be copying over some of them. And you will see that the general idea is that we're reading save data, writing save data, right? This is, of course, here so that the type gets properly saved after you exit the world. Otherwise, you all of a sudden would have a, you know, custom boat over here that's going to be oak or something like that. So like it resets. But those are basically always going to be the same methods that you will always need to implement. And then if you have multiple different types of boats, right? Let's say you had a walnut tree, for example, as well, right? Walnut planks and you wanted to have a walnut boat as well. And it is actually as easy as just adding the enum type of walnut as well. And then changing it in the item itself. Because the items, we're going to add those in a second, right? Where you can basically right click with the boat on a block and then it's going to spawn the boat. That is basically where you define what type of a boat you want to spawn. That's pretty much all that there is to it. So luckily it is pretty pretty easily expandable. There are two more things that we need here, though. That is the get drop item method that we want to overwrite. And for this, we want to return a switch right here in this case for the get mod variant. And in this case, we're going to choose case pine. And then we'll return mod items dot. Well, we don't have this yet, but we can already basically fill it out. This is the pine boat dot get. So the idea is that once we add the pine boat over here, we are basically good to go. End it with a semicolon over here. And that's going to be the get drop item method. Once again, we're going to go back when we have to. This constructor is actually the one we need here we need to keep this and the other constructor we need a second one this is the modball entity constructor right here where we'll pass in a level net microphone level then a double px a double py and a double pz which basically represents the position that this spawns in this will then call this so it's going to call the constructor above it with right now the first parameter being nothing because we don't have the entity registered yet the second parameter is going to be the level and then this dot set pause Passing in px, py, and pz, and then saying this dot xo equals to px, this dot yo equals to py, and last but certainly not least, this dot zo is equal to pz. There you go, that is the second constructor done, and we can move on to the chest boat entity where 
I'm just going to make this a little bit simpler. I'm going to, first of all, extend this from the chest boat. Very important that we choose the chest boat right here. That is quite important. We're going to hover over this and create constructor matching super. Once again, choosing this one. And in this case, I'm just going to copy over the contents of this. You will see a lot of things that are pretty much the same as you can see, right? The entity data accessor right here. We have the set variant methods as well as the get mod variant. So those are basically almost the same as we have right here. However, it is the chest boat entity in this case. And you can see here, even it refers to another entity because that's basically the thing that we have to define. And defining it, we'll do that in the mod entities class over here. So this is going to be a public static final registry object of type entity type of type mod boat entity. First of all, that's going to be our mod underscore boat. And once again, you can use this for as many different types of boats as you want. Entity types that register. There's going to be the mod underscore boat here. And then it's going to be a supplier of entity type dot builder dot of and then mod boat entity colon colon new. Then we have the mob category dot miscellaneous in this case. After the first closing parentheses dot size and the size is 1.375F and 0.5625F. That is basically taken from the normal boat from the vanilla boat over here. And then after the first closing parentheses once again dot build passing in mod underscore boat over here. And you will find once again this weirdness over here, which is, well, what is this, right? Can't resolve constructor. And you can see we can create one, but this is going to lead to some issues because then it's going to clash with this constructor. And actually, we do need that constructor. So how do we fix this? Well, this is done with the weirdest Java construction you may have ever seen. And that is when you have the entity type builder that of after the dot, right? So builder dot of, right? Before the off, you want the angle brackets and you want to put in mod boat entity. You want to put in mod boat entity and all of a sudden the error goes away. This is some weird Java craziness and magic over here for generics, but that is basically what you want to do. And then you can basically duplicate this and say mod chest boat entity. This is then the mod underscore chest underscore boat. And then here as well, right? Mod, mod underscore chest underscore boat. And here you also want the mod chest boat. And last but certainly not least, right here, mod chest boat entity. And here as well, also that's not mood, it's mod chest. There you go. And this is also mod boat. There you go. Mod chest boat, mod chest boat. Awesome. With those registered, you can see that this has now resolved. And then we can do the same thing in the mod boat entity. So mod entities dot mod boat dot get. And then the last thing here is just the item that is not properly done. But we're not done quite just yet because we don't want to go to the item just in just yet because we still have to have a client class. So this is very interesting. So we want a custom mod boat renderer here in this case. That's going to be extending the boat renderer. And this is also going to have a couple of custom things. And with a couple of custom things, I mean quite a extensive custom class actually, uh, but it should be okay. So if you look in the boat renderer, there's once again going to be a lot of copying from this particular class basically, but I'm going to do this from my own pre-programmed stuff. So once again, you, for you, you can take a look at the GitHub repository and basically get it all from there. So you can see we have a map here that goes from a mod boat entity type, right, to a pair of resource location and a list of boat models that is going to be a boat resources. Now, obviously we can't take this one because this one takes in the boat types, right? And not the mod boat types. That's why we need to basically have this, you know, customly made. And this is going to be equal to in the constructor, this boat resources equal to a stream dot of, and the stream of is going to be of a mod boat entity dot type. This is going to be very important that we choose our custom boat type right here dot values after the second closing parentheses dot collect. And then we're going to collect an immutable map dot to immutable map. We're going to start typing in the type. So this is going to get ourselves a function from type to type. We're going to return the type and then a comma and then another type over here, which you can see will now then turn this into a function from of type to pair of resource location and list of boat. It looks very crazy, but overall, it's basically just making it so that we have this so that we have this map that it gets the resource location and the boat model over here properly done. This is going to be then a pair dot of the pair is of a new resource location. This is going to be tutorial mod on mod ID. So this is going to be at our location. And then we're going to get the texture location. This is fine. Even if it's strike through, we're going to change this in a second anyway. Passing in the type as well as the P chest boat right here. After the second closing parenthesis, this dot create boat model. Also a method we're going to add in a second. Passing in P context as well as the type as well as the P chest boat right here. And then we can end it with a semicolon. 
Now, once again, you can see, oh, we have two methods that we haven't implemented. Now, they are implemented once again in the boat renderer, right? So you can see the get texture location here with a boat type. So you can see it's exactly the same thing. And here the create boat model is also a thing that is created right here. So in theory, you could copy them over from there as well. They, I think they barely need any changes. I think this one actually you can just copy over one way or the other. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy over the things that I've prepared over here. And then there should be no errors. Once again, take a look at the mod mode renderer class in the GitHub repository. It is basically always going to be the same way that you have to set this up. And then once you set it up, right, this is all done in generalities, right? So that the only change that you then need to do in the end is just add multiple different new items and the types over here, as I've said, right, the types right here. And then you can have as many boats as you want once you set this up once. So you can see we get the texture location, of course, based on the type of the boat. And that is why the name here, right, this name is actually quite important because that's going to be the name of the boat, right? It's going to take a look at the textures entity chess boat and then it looks for a pine.png or it looks under textures entity boat and then pine.png again. That is why the texture location here is so important. Model over here just creates a normal chess boat model or a normal boat model in this case. So that is well, that is actually fairly straightforward. And the rest are basically just a couple of helper methods that are just useful to have, basically. And there you go. That is the mod boat renderer done as well. Basically, let's get this done. So let's also then go to our tutorial mod class at the very bottom here, the client events, right? We want to call the entity renderers again, entity renderers.register mod entities dot this is going to be our modboat.get. We're actually going to have a p context. So you're going, to, we're going to start writing p, as you can see, p context. And then we're going to make a new modboat renderer here in this case, passing in p context. And then a false here for the modboat. Duplicate this for the chess boat. And then here for the chess boat, we of course want to put in a true because it uses the same renderer. As you can see, it just has a boolean over here for whether or not it's a chess boat or not. So that is quite important to keep in mind. With that done, the mod board renderer is done and we can finally proceed to add the item itself, which is actually also going to need a custom item class. So this is going to be a custom item class called the mod boat item here in this case, which will extend the item class. Let's hover over this and create constructor matching super. And you can press shift twice and look for the boat item and include non-project items. And we can see this is the boat item. And in theory, what you can do, and this is probably the easiest way to do this, you can literally just copy the contents of the boat item over here, paste them in right here. Of course, changing name mod boat item here in this case and then we can remove this as well and there you go and you can see this class now has no errors actually which is very strange right but it has no errors only things we want to change is first of all in the get boat over here instead of a new chest boat we want to make a new mod chest boat entity and then here instead of a new boat we want to make a new mod boat entity that's very important to change don't forget that and the second thing to change and this is extremely subtle and you might not even like see it but in the use method right here down here under the block hit result, right? We actually want to change this. And what I'm going to do is, and I, I highly suggest you do the same thing. Actually, you just take the entire use method from the GitHub repository and you copy it over because it is very, very subtle. So basically down here, you'll see that there's a couple of things that are changing, right? So we're still getting the boat, that's fine. But then we're basically checking whether or not it's a mod chest boat right here and then setting the variant to this uh, type. And if it is... And if it is just a normal boat, then we're then we're casting it and setting the type to this uh, type as well, which, and this is very important, the type here, of course, needs to be a mod chest boat entity dot type. Similar th thing here, mod chest boat entity type. And that is extremely important to change this. So double check the mod boat item class. Best thing to do is probably just copy it over from the GitHub repository. Like I said, this is just this is just going to spawn the entity with right clicking. And it's going to make sure that it has the correct type when it spawns. So that is why it is so important to properly have this. With that done, we can register the items over here. So that's going to be, let's take a look. Let me just get the pine sign here over here, for example. That's going to be totally fine. It's going to be the pine underscore boat here in this case. Of course, changing the name here as well, quite important. This is now the mod boat item. First parameter is going to be false because this is not the chest boat. Second parameter is going to be mod boat entity dot type dot pine. And the last one is going to be the properties here, which I think that we just we don't need any. I'm pretty sure. And this complains because, oh, because I put in the chest boat here instead of the normal boat. That's actually quite interesting. So there you go. Mod boat entity type. And then that should be fine as well. 
And then no more errors are present right here. We can then duplicate this to the pine underscore chess underscore boat. And then here as well, pine underscore chess underscore boat mod boat item. And then a true here for the has chest. The boat, pi the boat type stays the same. Absolutely freaking fantastic. With the items registered, we can now finally get this guy going. Import the mod items class. Mod boat entity is done. Chess boat, import the mod items class. And there we go. The classes are pretty much done over here. And we now just need the data gen as well as all of the other JSON files. The data gen, of course, is just going to be, well, simple items over here. Nothing too crazy because the boats themselves, like the items, just have normal item model for JSON files and a normal texture. So we, of course, have the pine boat as well as the pine chest boat. However, we have another thing that we actually want, and that is going to be down here on the entity. There's an entity tutorial mod mod underscore chest underscore boat, because that's actually going to be displayed when you open the chest itself. And that usually has the, the text boat with chest. That's why I basically have it right here. So that's that. And then when it comes to the textures, which are, of course, also all available to you. Let's first of all do the two items as they are, well, they're very much uh, the easiest to do right here. That's going to be the pine boat as well as the pine chest boat. Nothing too crazy over here, but pretty cool nonetheless. And then the other ones are actually under, as you might have already seen, a textures entity, a new directory called boat, and that's going to be the pine.png. And then in entity, another new directory called the chess underscore boat, which is also going to be called pine.png. Make sure to basically choose the correct one. You will be able to easily tell which one is which as the one with the chessboard has a chess inside of the texture. So it should be pretty easy to keep separate when you take a look at them. Right, that should be everything that we need to do. I'm I'm, I'm at least hoping over here because I feel like that there should have been enough anyway. But uh, oh, there is one thing and that is adding them to the creative mode tab. Ah, uh, you thought you thought I would forget it. I would never forget such a thing. That is that has never happened to me ever in recording history up at all. Like not it's it has happened a lot like actually like way too many times. But there you go, added them to the creative mode tab and then we can run the data gen over here. Uh, I've made a great blunder that it actually is something else that we do need to add and that is a, another layer for the boats. So we do need a custom layer right here. Listen, okay, boats are, th there's a lot to do, okay? So for this, we basically, let's just copy this over. This is the pine underscore boat underscore layer. And as you can see, these layers, you actually need one for each one of your different boats. That's very important because this one is boat slash pine. And then we duplicate this for the pine chess boat. And this is then the chess underscore boat slash pine. So as I said, you need one for each one of your different types of boats. And those are, of course, then used in the same way that the rhino layer is used here in the mod event bus client events. If you don't have this yet, basically create this class with the event bus subscriber over here for the mod bus as well as the client over here. And then very important, we want to have a static void, a public static void register layers method here with this event as a parameter. And of course, having the add subscribe event bus annotation. And then you can basically duplicate this, get the boat over here as well as the chess boat. And then the models here are going to be the boat model colon colon create body model as well as the chest boat model colon colon create body model that should be bit and we do also need this otherwise your game is going to crash but now i am pretty sure that we should have everything that we need so let's jump into the game again and see if it works all right friends of back in minecraft as you can see the pine boat as well as the pine chest boat have been added to minecraft so let's set them down and there we freaking go they do work they also work on land, by the way, so that it does is a thing that that works. But <laughs> there you go. So that is pretty freaking awesome. And I can even open the chest right here, as you can see. And I can also m row about just like the intro said, right? Row, row, row your boat. And that is how easy it is to add some custom boats to Minecraft. I will say easy might be a relative term, but relatively easy might be the next tutorial right here. We'll add a custom throwable projectile to Minecraft. Hope to see you there. So, yeah.